Hi, I hope you're enjoying the music that we've got for you, and it's speaking to your heart. We're going to read out of God's Word, and I hope that perhaps that later on in the day, if you get a chance, you look these scriptures up or follow along. I'll give you the references. Um, I'm going to be reading in Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 15. Not here on the porch because it's gotten cool outside and somewhat windy and a little breeze anyway. And um, it's nice and warm here on my porch, even though it's not completely heated. There are some plants that can stand it. And so I've got a jacket on, but um, I'm pretty comfortable. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 15. But this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will, set, I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep, and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. Sounds a lot like Jesus in the New Testament, doesn't it? Well, let's go to the New Testament, and we're going to read in Isaiah, no, in Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. And this is going to talk about the kingship of Jesus and, and our response here on earth as we as we wait for the coming of Jesus and um, the magnificence of our Lord Jesus Christ is spoken of here in Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called, called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like working, the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand above all the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God has placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So he's set us into a wonderful place as being a part of the church. And as being the church, the called out ones, we've also got an awesome responsibility that he's called us to. And we're going to read about that in Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 41. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on his throne in the heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, 
You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you, you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for his devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did, not, to, not for one of these, the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So those are sobering words for us today as people living in the modern age. If any of you have kept goats, you know that he picked that on purpose. And in those days, I'm sure it was more common to work with goats. And the nature is just different from that of the sheep. The goats seem to always want to get out of their fence. The sheep, while they do that some, can be kept, I've kept them before, just in a regular sheep fence. And they, oh, maybe every once in a while will get out. But for the most part, they follow their boundaries. So you can see a clear distinction here between the sheep and the goats. He picked those because there is, by nature, something in the goat that makes them not want to follow rules, and kind of get in trouble. Now, don't get me wrong, I love goats, and they're the most uh, winsome when they're kids. They're so fun to watch. But there's also something about them where they don't like boundaries. And they, I've taken them with me to go out, and because they're really useful in killing trees in a pasture, and they'll stay with me for a little bit, but if I don't watch it, they'll wander off. I've got a friend who has, uh, as his occupation, building fences. And he builds gates and fences and keeps goats. But even then, there'll be some that will figure out a way to get through his gates or through his fence. And often what will happen when they get out, especially at night, a coyote will come and pick them off because they're not with the flock and not in the safety of the pen. And so that's what it is about goats. And I've got a little bit of an illustration, if I can find it. I found it. Here's my electric fence. Sometimes I needed this to get the attention of my goats because the regular fence wouldn't hold them in. And they needed a shock. And so Jesus used this illustration of the sheep and the goats and eternal bliss and eternal judgment to get the attention of the, especially the, the Pharisees around and the, and the people who weren't paying attention to, to God and to the prophets. They were ignoring Jesus and his disciples because they had not gotten, they had not received that nature that comes from believing. And I believe there was going to be some rough times for the disciples ahead, and those were his brothers. But the 
people he was talking about were the disciples that were to follow and those of us who are disciples are to take care of one another, to take care of the church, first of all. Because remember, it says in the scriptures how we love, how they love one another. That's how they could tell they were Christians. And they will know we were Christians by our love. There's a song like that. It's throughout the New Testament that that is the key to understanding whether someone's heart is right with God. Is It's not so much whether their doctrinal beliefs agree exactly with ours. It's do they love one another and do they love the Lord. And he gives some exact and succinct ways in which we can demonstrate that love. Now, of course, we have to feel that love. We have to know the scriptures. That's true. But we also need to act out on it. As the book of James tells us, that it's not just what's inside, but it's how we live it out. And the goats and the sheep have different natures. All of us start off with the goat nature until we're converted. We all have that nature that wants to, to jump the boundaries, that wants to take off and do something that isn't pleasing to our Lord. But if we become converted, we receive that new nature, that, as it were, the sheep nature. And it helps us to, as we, especially as we mature, to, to listen to the Lord and to follow him. And we don't need as astonishing reminders that we need to stay away from those things which are a danger to our soul. So the nature of the sheep is different than that of the goats because the sheep that are on my right here are the regenerate ones, the ones who have received Jesus as their Savior and received that power from the Holy Spirit. And they do those good things without really thinking, am I going to get rewarded for this or not? but doing it because it's their nature through the power of the Holy Spirit to do that which is right to those who need it. And on the left are the goats who by nature aren't even aware of the other's needs, maybe. They're so caught up with their own things that they aren't even watching to help others. And that doesn't mean that some of them don't help others, but they aren't helping the disciples in the kingdom of God. And that's not to say that Salvation is by doing the good things for one another. The salvation is by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But if we have that faith and if we follow, then we will do those good things for others. Make sure that we take care of one another here on earth. And sometimes we need a scripture like that. If we're complacent, we can tend to be like goats our old nature and not think of others. And so God sends a shock to us and says, you know, you need to pay attention. You need to nurture that new nature in you and go out and help those who are in need. So especially as we approach this Thanksgiving and later on the Christmas season, let's think about those who might need our help, those that need a visit, if we can visit under these circumstances, or a phone call those who need food or clothing, find ways to help meet the needs of those who are suffering during these times. Help us to know, we ask, O oh God, what we should do and how we should do it best. Amen.